Modern F1 cars rely on more than just internal combustion to reach their maximum power output. The V6 turbocharged hybrid engines generate an extra 160 brake horsepower via the ERS, Energy Recovery System. The power for this electric motor is recovered from energy that otherwise would have been wasted. The MG UK recovers energy from braking and the MG UH from the turbo. The ERS system has a number of modes that can be changed on the fly for even more harvest or deployment depending on if you need to charge the battery or gain more performance. Each lap you can only harvest and deploy a limited amount of energy. This remaining value is visible on the MFD. This system will also degrade with use. As your energy store wears, the battery capacity will decrease. Additionally, as the MG UK wears, the rate you can harvest energy is slowed. Keeping up with the development race is vital for continued success in Formula 1, but resources are limited, so choose carefully where you allocate them. Throughout your career, you will earn resource points, and there are four departments of development in which you can spend them. Chassis, aerodynamics, powertrain, and durability. At any one time, each of these can be tasked with researching a new part. Higher levels of upgrade will cost more and take longer to complete, but the performance gains will be significant. Through contract negotiation, you can improve the speed and develop more upgrades at the same time. Department morale is also an important factor, so be careful what you say to the press. You'll need to find the right balance to suit your needs and maximise performance throughout the season. Over the course of the Formula 1 season, each driver is limited in the number of power unit and gearbox components that they may use. Exceeding these limitations will result in grid penalties. Your available power unit components can be managed on the vehicle management screen, as can your gearbox, which must complete a designated number of consecutive race weekends. However, an additional gearbox is available exclusively for use in Free Practice 1 and 2. The multifunction display is a vital tool to give drivers control over their cars and make important information visible during a race. It's possible to cycle through the screens on the MFD to access the settings such as brake bias or the tyres to be fitted at the next pit stop, as well as car condition, component temperatures and race strategy information. When speaking to your engineer through the radio, the MFD is also the place where you'll be able to view and select your available commands. Tyre selection is a critical issue in Formula 1 and the current tyre regulations give individual drivers more freedom than ever. Pirelli allow 13 sets of dry tyres and 7 sets of wet tyres for a full race weekend. So you need to be careful to make your allocation last the distance. From the dry sets, three are pre-selected by Pirelli and marked as mandatory for Q3 in the race. But drivers can adjust their allocation for the other 10 sets from the three available compounds. Just remember, during the Grand Prix, every driver must use one of Pirelli's mandatory tyres plus one set from a different compound. The safety car may be deployed if there's an incident or if the conditions are too dangerous to drive in. Once the safety car is out on track, there's no overtaking permitted and you must keep your lap time above a minimum in order to safely form a queue behind it. You can judge your pace using the delta element of the on-screen display. Ensure you drive slowly enough to keep it positive. Once a line has formed, the safety car will re-enter the pits. Remember that there's no overtaking until the green flags at the first safety car line. If the incident is less severe, the virtual safety car may be deployed. It's not necessary to form a queue under the VSC, but just stay above a certain delta time and obey yellow flag rules until the virtual safety car period comes to an end. The formation lap is an opportunity to practice your race start and put some energy through your tyres and brakes to get them up to the optimal temperature for the beginning of the race. When the light goes green, pull away from the grid and stay in position, making sure to keep your car in good condition as you drive a lap at a steady but consistent pace in order to prepare for the start of the Grand Prix. Races aren't won from the start line, but they can be lost. 
so getting a good start can make an important difference to your Grand Prix. As the lights come on, engage the clutch by holding the gear up button. Then, feed in the throttle to build up the revs. When the lights go out, release the clutch and it's away we go. But be careful not to release the clutch too early or you may end up jumping the start. If your RPM is too low when you drop the clutch, your car may go into enter stall. Don't panic if this happens, keep a cool head, clutch in, build up the RPM and then release the clutch, just like the start procedure to get underway again. There's a huge amount of time to be won and lost in the pits, but ensure that you don't get too greedy as you approach the pit lane speed limit line. On the approach, you'll see a notification of the pit lane speed limit and your distance to the limit line. If you cross this threshold too fast, you'll be given a speeding penalty, so be careful. There are valuable tents to be won by getting it right though, so leave your braking as late as you dare. At the pit exit, it's important not to cross onto the racetrack before reaching the end of the white pit exit line. The drag reduction system, or DRS, opens a flap on the rear wing to reduce drag and improve the straight line speed of the car. Drivers are able to use this system in specific DRS zones as long as the circuit is dry. There are no additional restrictions to DRS used in practice and qualifying, however, in a race, the system can only be used when the driver is one second or less behind another. Watch the bar at the bottom of your multifunction display as you approach the DRS zone to see your distance to the activation point and activate it by pressing the DRS button when the prompt appears. In the unforgiving world of Formula One, free practice sessions are a vital part of any Grand Prix weekend. During your F1 career, you'll be able to utilize these sessions to complete practice programs which will help you learn the track and earn new points that can be invested in developing your car. You'll also be able to adjust your car setup over the course of these sessions to try and find those extra fractions of a second. The track acclimatization program available in free practice sessions allows you to learn the track whilst earning resource points for the development of your car. On-track markers show the key points through each corner and the more of these you're able to consistently drive through at an appropriate speed, the higher your score and the more resource points you'll be rewarded with. Try and chain together multiple successful corners for a consistency boost to your score. Consistency over a long distance is vital in Formula 1, so being able to manage tyres and reduce tyre wear is a useful skill. The tyre management programme available in free practice sessions will help you learn tyre management while earning resource points for development of your car. Be careful on the controls to reduce the amount of tyre slip and therefore wear. The better you can do this, the higher you will score and the more resource points you'll receive. You'll need to balance tyre management with speed as you must stay under the target lap time. When the on-screen bar moves towards the red end, that means that you're wearing your tyres more than expected at this part of the lap. When it moves towards the purple, you're wearing them less. Stay in the green or purple for a successful test. In today's era of hybrid engine technology, Formula One employs a strict maximum limit on the fuel load. In order to run as light as possible, teams will tend to under-fuel their cars, but this means drivers need to save fuel during the race. Fuel saving can be achieved through certain engine settings or by using a technique called lift and coast. This technique involves lifting off the throttle a few metres before the normal braking zone and allowing the drag from the air to begin the process of slowing the car. This reduces the amount of fuel used while keeping the speed relatively high. The best place to employ lift and coast is at the end of a long straight into a heavy braking zone. The qualifying pace program available in free practice sessions challenges you to beat a target time that corresponds to an expected position on the starting grid. Complete three flat out laps on the fastest tire compound to set the best time you can and you'll earn resource points for hitting your target. The race strategy program is all about developing a personal race strategy. 
This test will help the team to understand how much fuel is required and also the best tyre policy to employ for the race. The results are determined from data which is directly affected by your driving style, so managing your fuel and tyre wear during the test, for example, will result in a strategy that caters to these qualities.